for the message today, we're going to be talking about, as the title suggests, and it is a question. And the question is, what do you worship? What do you worship? So we as humans were created by God, big G, for fellowship, to have a relationship with Him. We as humans are designed with this need to worship something. And the problem that we have in today's time, whether you're lost or Christian alike, either one, is that a lot of times people find themselves worshiping something other than the one true God. We create a little g God. And the thing about it is that a lot of us do it and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Who is running the world right now as we speak? Satan. He's running the world. He is moving everything in whatever direction he wants it to go in. And he, he distracts us. He distracts us and he puts obstacles in our way. He puts these idols in our way to keep us from worshiping the one true God how we're supposed to. Satan has got your idol picked out and ready to go. Put it right in your face at every given opportunity. And there's a reason that we're talking about this. And the reason is our time on this earth is running out quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we don't need any distractions. We don't need anything to be on our way. We don't need anything keeping us from serving the one true God how we're supposed to. We're not supposed to have anything above God. So if you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Exodus 23 says... You must not have any other God but me. With that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Most Righteous Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us to be in your house today, Lord. I ask you to please just bless this word today, God. I ask you to please anoint my lips, anoint my tongue today, Father, and let it be what you want to be spoken today, Lord. Not what Tyler wants. It needs to be all about you, God. I pray that you please just fill this house with your spirit today, Father. As always, I want to know we love you, praise you, and thank you for everything you've done. All of the many blessings against Father. Let's call these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now I know what y'all are thinking. That has got to be the shortest text that we have ever seen in here. But that one verse carries a lot of weight to it. Carries a lot of weight to it. It is commandment number one after all. Like I said before, God created us to have fellowship with with Him. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. He wants that relationship with Him to be our number one priority in our life. Our God is a jealous God. He wants our love. He don't want us to love Him, but love something else just as much or more than Him. He wants to be the main focus of our lives. So, do you focus more on your desires? Do you focus more on your little G? Or do you focus more on the big G, the God, the Father up in heaven? Whenever you are putting your desires before the real God, you're going to have problems. Let's look at what Jesus says. Matthew chapter 6, verses 20, verse 24. It says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Jesus speaking here says it clear as can be. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Money is the number one idol in the world. Would everybody agree with that? Paul reiterates this in 1 Timothy. Chapter 6, verse 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people, craving money, have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. There is an emphasis on money being one of, if not the biggest idol in the world. But here's the thing. Money is not the only idol that you can have. Money is not the only thing that is worshipped. 
So today we're going to go through and look at different types of things that people will worship instead of God. So are you ready for the first example of things that can be worshiped instead of God? Example number one, false gods like these. And I'm just going to go ahead and say the Muslims probably might be planning to blow me up now because I put a picture of Muhammad up here and they don't like that. But these are false gods that you'll see that people still worship in modern times. But we need to understand that these mythologies, these faiths, and these false gods, they've been around for centuries. They've been around for centuries. And they're just some of the ones that we know that people worship in modern times. But our Bible tells of more false little g gods. It does. That people worshipped in those times. For example, and forgive me because I know that I'm going to pronounce these names wrong, probably. So, here we go. They have Ashtoreth, Baal, Beelzebub, Bel, Chemosh, Dagon, Molech, Tammuz, Artemis, Castor, Pollux. They even refer to Barnabas as Zeus and Paul as Hermes in the Bible whenever they had a run-in with people who had worshipped the false Greek gods. Acts 14 verse 8 through 12 tells this story. It says, While they were at Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth, so he had never walked. He was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, Stand up. And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their local dialect, These men are gods in human form. They decided that Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus and that Paul was Hermes since he was the chief speaker. We see here that false god worship was in full swing even in those times. The people in Lystra witnessed a healing being performed by faith in the one true God and what did they do? They attributed it to their false Greek gods, claiming that Barnabas and Paul were Zeus and Hermes in the flesh. So you have false god worship all throughout the Bible into today's time as well. And the thing is, all these false gods had to have a starting point. They all had to start somewhere. And me personally, I do not believe that a human mind could just come up with all this. People had to have seen something to point them in the direction of this false pagan worship. I believe that these were all living beings that died and did not have the same type of powers that God has. And you know what we always say, do your own research. But there's some key verses that lead me to believe this way. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 it says, Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. In those days and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. Now I know that we use these verses quite a bit, but whenever we look into the human fallen angel hybrids, the Nephilim, and we see what the word refers to them as, the word says, they became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. We do not know everything that these beings were capable of, but them being children of fallen angels who were followers of Satan seems to point in the direction that Satan used these beings as a way to sway people from worshiping the one true God. And still today, People worship them instead of worshiping God. So like I said, do your own research. But this seems to be correct, for example, number one, of false worship. 
Now we need to look at example number two of false worship, which is self-worship. Whenever a person spends more time devoted to serving themselves instead of serving the one true God. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. This describes the state of our world perfectly today. You have people who are so obsessed with themselves, so obsessed with chasing after their own desires, they have no respect for other people. And they most certainly do not have any respect for God. They'll be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. And those two words there, pride and pleasure, could that be a direction towards the alphabet people? Amen. I mean, think about that for a second. They have a month dedicated to them called Pride Month, and it is all about them celebrating their sinful pleasures. And they crave attention. They want to be worshipped for being in that state. They view those sinful lusts as their God, treating themselves as gods for being so enticed by their sin. But that's not the only sin that could be viewed that way. Look at people who struggle with addiction. Addiction is most certainly an idol. Because you spend your time wondering, okay, what can I do to get that next high? What can I do to get that next drink? What can I do to get that next person of the opposite sex to come to my bedroom? When can I watch that next dirty video? Here's another one for you. How many people have sports teams that they watch all the time. Anytime they play, they're on it constantly, right? Or how many people have a TV show that they never miss an episode of? No matter what they're doing, they got to stop and they got to go watch that show. Those can be idols too. For the simple fact that a lot of people are more dedicated to those kinds of things than they are to spending time with God. So now we're going to look at our third and final example of false worship. Example number three. It's false ideologies. False ideologies sounds a lot like false idols, don't it? Let's see what the word says. Second Timothy chapter four, verses three through four says, "For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths." That time when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching? That's right now, people. People do have their own desires, and they do look for teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Thank God that we are a church who chooses to follow the truth and will not tell you what your itching ears want to hear. There is tons of false ideologies out there. And myself personally, I like conspiracy theories. I find them very interesting. But you've got to be able to discern what is truth and what is myth. And in order to do that, we have to go to our number one guidebook. We've got to go to the Holy Bible. That's what we've got to go to, to discern what's truth and what's false. And the thing about it is, we've got all these false prophets out there who will come up and they'll use the word to tell whatever story that they're wanting to tell because they're being led by Satan. And the thing about it is, is this. You have to know how to rightfully divide the Word of God. You have to know how to rightfully divide the Word of God. It cannot just be, okay, I'm going to take this verse at face value and go from there and that's what it says and that's that. No, you need to know what it says before. You need to know what it says after. You need to know who's talking, who are they talking to, what time period is it. You need to know everything about it in order to understand it. You need to understand if it's a metaphor or if it's literal. Amen. You cannot... You cannot listen 
to everybody because you've got so many people that are going to try to lead you down the wrong path. And the sad part is today, there are so many people that fall for it. There's so many people that fall for it. These false ideologies, these false idols, all these false gods, they're all distractions made by Satan to keep you from doing what you're supposed to do, to keep you from serving the one true God. So, I say all that to say this. If there is anything in your life that is going above God for you, it's time that you push it out. Because we do not have enough time left to have anything else at number one besides God. With that, let's get a song of invitation. If there's anybody in here today and you feel like there's anything in your life that is taking up too much of your time, is taking up too much of your dedication, if there's anything in your life that you feel is taking God's place and you want to get it out, come to this altar and we can work that out. And if there's anybody in here that is not born again, if there's anybody in here that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, now is the time because our time on this earth is getting shorter and shorter and shorter by the day, by the second even. Now's the time to get right. So as she plays, I ask y'all, if there's anybody that does not know Jesus, please come to that altar.
open hearted I come 